Hey friends, welcome back. This is me, Monica Sharma, and welcome to MS Bio Academy. And today we are going to talk about a very interesting topic that is how uh, in our body the B cells produce different kind of uh, isotypes of antibodies. That is different classes of antibodies like we know uh, IgG, IgM, IgD, Ig, IgA, IgE. all these five types of antibody which are present in our body how they are being produced right so we are going to talk about this only in the isotype switching or it is also known as the class switching recombination or in short csr so let's begin it so isotype switching is also known as immunoglobulin class switching or it can be called as isotypic commutation or the class switch recombination right now uh, what it exa- exactly is made up of where the these isotype genes are present so we know that we have already studied in the vdg recombination when we were studying about the antibody diversity that how the diversity that that is uh, we know that there are many kinds of uh, pathogens are there in the environment right so for every pathogens our body need to produce some billions of antibodies also right uh, to fight against them now these antibodies should be specific to each and every pathogen which is present in the environment right so how is it possible that our uh, body is making all such kind of specific antibodies against all those specific antigens by means of a vdg recombination okay at the variable gene segment region right of heavy chain and light chain so that we have already covered right now we have to talk about that how the different classes of antibodies are being produced so different class of antibody if you know the structure of the antibody we know that two of them are the heavy chain and the two are the light chains right and we know there is a constant region and the variable region in both the light and the heavy chain so this is a variable region for uh, uh, light chain and a constant region for the light chain and this is a variable region for heavy chain and constant regions heavy chain so the constant region of the heavy chain we know that determines which type of uh, isotype of antibody is present right so depending on which type uh, of heavy chain constant region is there there are five classes or the isotype of the antibody as we know so these antibodies the different isotypes of antibodies is being coded by the constant region of gene segments which are present in the immunoglobulin gene okay so this is one of the immunoglobulin gene so here it is the vdj region vdj gene segments which are responsible for the variable portion gene segment coding of the variable portion gene segment amino acid sequence right so it gives the diversity to the antibody right now after uh, this vdj sequence just downstream of the vdj you can see there is a one gene segment which is coding for the mu heavy chain right so mu heavy chain leads to which kind of antibody it leads to the igm right so if this mu uh, gene segment is getting transcribed so igm antibody will be produced if d delta heavy chain constant segment is getting uh, transcribed it is going to and finally translated it is going to produce the igd antibody similarly there is a gamma 3 is present it is going to produce the igg3 right then gamma 1 is going to produce igg1 these are the subclasses of igg uh, isotype okay so then igg alpha 1 will produce igg a1 then uh, this will produce igg2 igg4 and epsilon will produce ige and alpha 2 will produce ig a2 right so these are the different kinds of isotypes of antibody which are present in our body and they are being produced now which antibody should be produced which isotype of antibody should be produced it depends on the interaction which is taking place between the b cell receptors and the antigen when the antigen is first encountering the b cell right so when antigen is first interacting with the b cell it sends certain kind of a signal uh, to inside the b cells and these signals actually lead to the class switching so the uh, uh, class switching means either this antibody can be produced this isotype of antibody can be produced or this gene segment will get switch on and uh, this will get produced or either this 
waste can get produced so all this depends on how well uh, the particular isotype of an antibody can interact and clear that particular pathogen right so we are going to cover up all these things in details now right so uh, this is just a basic idea how the vdg and the constant gene segments in the human heavy chain gene segments are getting arranged right so uh, here uh, you have to keep that in mind that in the class switching only the constant region gene segments are getting changes so there is a change is only happening in the constant region of the antibody okay no change is happening in the variable portion okay variable region is not getting changed because vdj recombination is already done right so already decided that for this antigen this specific kind of a variable region is required and that uh, by vdj recombination that uh, particular uh, variable region is now synthesized right now what we have to do we have to decide that which isotype or which class of the antibody we need to prepare that depends on the constant region so now the constant region is only getting change here so uh, since variable region is not getting changed that means what the specificity for the antigen for this particular antibody is not going to affect whether it is any class of the antibody which is going to be produced right so that means the antibody retains the affinity for that specific antigen i hope this is clear so only change is happening in the constant region so which can uh, which leads to the uh, antibody to interact with the different effector molecules and thus help in the better clearance of this antigen right so this is uh, the concept of this uh, uh, class switching now what happen is uh, during when uh, there is a naive mature b cell is present so naive means which uh, the mature b cell which has never encountered any antigen which has not never interacted till now any antigen in its life right so that is called as a naive mature b cell so normally the naive mature b cell what it produce it's normally produce the igm and igd antibody by default okay so uh, there is no activation or class switching is happening here they are just by default they are producing igm and igd why they are producing igd and igm i'm going to cover up in the next slide okay so here just remember they are going to produce igm and igd now how the class switching happens that other different specific antibody like ige iga and igd these antibody or these classes of antibody depends on what it depends on the signal which this b cell will get when it interacts with antigen so when antigen comes so here you can see in this diagram when antigen is coming this b cell mature b cell it has a b cell receptors right it recognize this antigen and it will internalize this antigen and then the antigen processing will happen so antigen will uh, break down into a peptides and this peptide is then presented with the mhc molecule on the surface right that is called antigen presentation and uh, this uh, presentation of a, a peptide molecule is being uh, recognized by the t cell receptor on the t helper cells right so this generate one kind of a signal for b cells to get activated right so this is one kind of a signal which he get now second type of signal what he get you can see here this is a cd40 ligand is present on the b cell surface right so this will bind with the cd40 receptors on the t helper cells so this will generate the second signal right so these signals what it is doing they are actually activating the t helper cells and t helper cells in turn what it is doing it is activating the b cells how they are going to release on activation these t helper cells are going to release cytokines like interleukin 2 4 5 in this case okay so they are going to released and these uh, interleukins will bind with the interleukin receptor which is present on the b cell right so this will uh, then give a signaling pathway it will start the signaling pathway inside specific signals will be uh, uh, initiated inside and this will alter all these uh, gene segments the constant region gene segments uh, that uh, which class need to be switched so that all process of class switching will then start here okay and then the when this will differentiate it will differentiate into a plasma cells and the memory cells and plasma cells we know that this is a factory of antibodies so now during this activation when this class switching uh, thing has happened so that the plasma cell is now going to produce that particular uh, class of antibody which is now being activated due to this signal okay so how this happened that also i'm going to go uh, detail so we are moving step by step in the detail of this whole process okay in each and every slide so this is the basic of uh, uh, another step 
how this happens now we go little bit more deeper into how this happens what are the signals which are being produced and how the class switching happens exactly so uh, now look at again to the these gene segments okay so this is the vdg segments we are not talking about this just downstream to the vdg sequence you will see these are the constant region genes are present and if you look carefully here uh, on the upstream of each and every constant region you will find this circular portion what is this so except in case of a delta uh, gene segment in all of the other isotype of gene segments they have the on the upstream there is one point is there these are called as a switch okay so these are called as switch now switch is similar like just you have a fan switch and light switch right so it can turn on or turn off right so what it do is at uh, these switches actually if you broaden up okay so what is this switch is made up of it is actually this uh, this is called the s region in short okay switch or s region so this s region mainly contains some tendon repeats of short g rich sequences so there are some g rich sequences are present uh, okay so mostly the g rich sequences are present that is of some 20 to 80 base pairs in length and uh, they differ in all of the isotypes okay so this uh, particular s region may be uh, of some other uh sequences but it will be g rich okay all these sequences are g rich also they can be of different uh, sizes right so you can say that overall length of uh, all these uh, uh, these s regions can be from 1 kb to 12 kb for example for this region for which is uh, just upstream of mu this is of some 3 kb okay so uh, this is of some 3 kb and uh, just uh, uh, near here so if i zoom it here here what is this just uh, upstream of the switch region there is a one promoter i region is also present so promoter region is specifically for uh, binding of the transcription factors right so transcription factors will come and bind and recognize these promoter region and they will start the transcription right so from here the transcription will start so the first gene which the uh, these transcription factor the first rna which they are going to synthesize is the this one the just near to this switch is the mu right so after this translation which antibody we are going to get igm similarly it can also do because uh, delta has no other switch okay so its uh, transcription will also start from here only and it is going to produce igd so that is the reason why i said you in the earlier slide that the naive mature b cells normally produce by default igm and igd antibodies on the surface right so because they are just present near to the vdj downstream of the vdj so the first antibodies isotype which is going to be produced is igd and igm in all the b cells right mature b cells by default but now what will happen later on how these other kind of antibodies are produced now when the antigen will come and bind to them okay now what will happen uh, as i told you in the earlier slide signals are generated by means of certain cytokines or interleukins so depending on which uh, a cytokine is uh, producing a signal specific kind of antibody uh, or the specific kind class of antibody is going to be switched on okay so switched on means that that transcription of that particular class of antibody will then occur now how this occur is there is a double uh, stranded break will be produced okay at the s region so that is the importance of this s region okay so double stranded break will be produced at this s region since this is a double stranded dna so double stranded break will be produced here in the s region and also at that specific region where of which class of the antibody need to be switched on so let's suppose if gamma is need to be switched on okay so gamma needs to be prepared igg needs to be prepared okay so at this portion and at this portion of the switch uh there will be a double stranded break will be produced so there are many enzymes are involved in this that also i'm going to talk about it in the next slide so we'll go much deeper at the enzymatic level in the next slide just here understand how this process occurs so here this uh, uh, break will occur then uh, this middle portion will be deleted and the rest of the portion will be joined so now just next to the vdj which will come now it will come the 
gamma 1 and then its mrna will be produced and similarly the after translation igg antibody class of isotype of antibody will be produced so this is how it happen let me uh, get it clearly understand to you with the help of this diagram so here you can see these are the genes in the heavy chain locus of igm expressing b cells right so normally this is expressing the igm now what will happen if there is a uh, the by means of the antigen activation right if this class needs to be synthesized or you can say this isotype igg1 needs to be synthesized so what will happen there will be a break will be produced at this spacer uh, this s region and at this s region right just upstream of the gamma 1 right and just upstream just downstream of the uh, s region which is just next to the vdj okay so every time just next to the vdj will occur and every time whatever isotype is need to be uh, produced just upstream of that uh, s region there will be a break will be produced right so this portion will be deleted and the rest of the portion will be joined together by means of a non homologous end joining okay so uh, these switch regions will join together okay and finally what we get is this okay so we get the vdj then these switch uh, are joined and then gamma 1 so finally the when the transcription factor will come and bind to the promoter region here and it will start synthesizing the rna so this RNA will be produced for IgG1 and finally after translation it is going to produce the IgG1 antibody right so this is how it all happens right if IgE needs to be produced so here one break will happen here one break will happen here one break here one break will happen this middle portion will be deleted and these two portions will then join together so then later on we get the IgE antibody so this is how it all happens right so randomly so this is called the class switching there is a switching of the class from one one to another now what are, i told you that there are many enzymes which are involved in this breaking of the uh, these uh, double in creating a double stranded break okay during this class switching and also during the this uh, process to continue right so what are these enzymes are there is one particular enzyme which is uh, creating these breaks is the activation induced DMNAs, cited in DMNAs, or in short, you can say AID. So, what it do is, it will create, it will uh, turn all the cytosines which are present in the S region and in the immunoglobulin variable regions to uracils by deamination. So, uh, just imagine this is a VDJ, okay. So, this is the immunoglobulin variable gene, okay. Just after this, I am telling you that there is a mu, then delta, okay, and then there is a spacer region and uh, there is a gamma. Right. So let's suppose till here only. Okay. So what will happen when uh, this uh, uh, enzyme will come? Okay. So what it will do? It will when it will this transcription factor also come. So this enzyme, let's suppose this is that enzyme. Okay. This will also uh, club with the transcription factor. And when the transcription is will start. Okay. So when the transcription will start, what will happen? The whatever the C. I told you the this S region is made up of some sequences right G rich sequences so there may be uh, a one base with the cytosine also so wherever there is a cytosine in both the uh, strands right so what this enzyme will do this enzyme will do it is going to convert these C into U uracil okay so what will happen now the DNA repair enzymes will come okay so what they will do these uh, dna repair system will come and these two enzymes will come uracil dna glycolase and uh, this one so what they will do they will create in order to repair it they will create a break okay they will create a break at all those portion wherever there is a uracils okay so there will be a double stranded break will be created in both these strands right so that is how this double stranded break happens in the s region which i have told you here that how this double stranded break happens first the deaminase uh, enzyme will come and it will convert all the cytosines which are present in these spacer regions into a uh, sorry s region into a, a uracils and for uh, these uracils to get repair uh, these other enzymes will come other two enzymes will come they will create a break at all those portions wherever there is a uracil that cytosine has con is converted into a uracil so it will create a break now due to this breaks then these breaks are then being deleted from those portions and the rest of the portion is being joined together by the non homologous end joining so this is how the whole process of the class switching 
happens so i hope this is clear to you if you like my lesson please do subscribe for my channel it is ms bio academy see you soon with the next lesson bye for now